few streaming. So I figured things would be nice and quiet. That means I can do another FUBAR video. Yes. This time I'm going to do um, iPod. All right, let's start with the, with the ending of the video uh, because I know some of you guys like watch a few minutes and they're like, oh, I know everything. I'm not going to watch the ending. So go ahead here and you guys can uh, you know follow me on Twitter. It's there. And go over to the website if you guys want to talk about what's going on in FUBAR. All right, here's everybody's talking about it, right, y'all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get down to business with the real business at hand. All right. I go over to the components, and you want to get the iPod Manager. There it is. Now, I grabbed this yesterday, but you know what? We're going to grab it again. See, I put it over here. I got my folders. This is a little, you know, good things. This is the area that we were playing around with yesterday. If you were joining us yesterday, we were all hanging out here. So you want to go to the home page on iPod Manager. Some of them will let you download it right from this page. This one, you go to the home page. You can grab the experimental, or uh, I usually like to grab this one because it's possibly more stable. Um, you will want to get the newest thing if you're using the newest version of iTunes, and I'll explain that in just a second, but first off, let's go ahead and grab that. I'm getting rid of my camera because it's weird. There we go. All right. Downloading this one. It's number two because they downloaded it earlier. Wow, I've got this um, cold, so I'm going to have this wonderful, you know, like New Jersey smoking, angry woman voice. Yes, dear. It's going to be awesome. Everyone's going to hate me for a week. All right, so uh, I'm going to put it into, yeah, whichever FUBAR folder. Yeah, this one. Components. Whatever FUBAR folder you have, you want to put it into your components folder. And again, if you've installed this, uh, yeah, it's already in there, whatever. For the sake of the video, I'll do it again. If you've installed this uh, the normal way, it may be in a folder based upon your username. So you'll want to look for, like, whatever username you're logged in as. And then inside that folder, there'll be a components folder. It helps, helps everything keep it helps keep everything nice and separate. So there we go. All right, we need that. And you also need a copy of iTunes. But you don't need everything from iTunes. You don't have to install iTunes. So just, I know a lot of you guys are freaking out because you hate iTunes. But you don't have to install it. You just need a few things from the executable file. So, um, I'll show you right here in the documentation what you need. Hey, it's nice they show you all the um, compatible models, so I guess I should have mentioned that first, but here's all the compatible models. All right, you're going to need to uh, install Apple Mobile Device Support and Apple Application Support, so we can go ahead and grab that, and it needs to be from iTunes 9.1 or newer. I typically do not like to get the newest version because sometimes the newest versions uh, will just kind of make the uh, plugin go crazy. So I'll get like a, just anything newer than 9.1 will work. So just go to, um, let's go to oldversion.com slash windows slash iTunes. That's where it lives. And let's grab just randomly, oh, sure, 10 point something, whatever. Um, now also, you want to make sure that you get uh, whatever version corresponds with your operating system. If you're running a 64-bit operating system, grab that one. If you're not, grab the one that does not have x64 beside it. The quickest way to figure out what you're running is to hold down the Windows Start key or the Super key for some of you guys out there who are going to yell at me for calling it a Start key. And then press Pause. And that will bring up this. And it will say System Type 64-bit Operating System x64. We want x64. I'm going to grab that one. All right, so go ahead and download now. It's going to do its download business. All right, so uh, we downloaded it there. It's in our folder. Now, you do not need to install this like I've said before. All you need to do is extract it. If you've got 7-zip, WinZip, WinRAR, or some uh, program like that, you can extract the .exe file. Just extract the files here. Just right-click on, on this and then hover over 7-zip and do extract here. And look at all these files that appear, all that crap. Okay, now we don't need that. You may need QuickTime unless it's already installed. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need the software update. And I don't need QuickTime either, so. So there. So just install um, Apple Application Support and then Apple Mobile Device Support. This will install the drivers you need for your uh, iPod. Just double click and install both of those. I don't need to walk you through that because it's pretty basic stuff. After you do that, we should be ready to open up FUBAR. So let's go ahead and open it up. There's FUBAR. Let me get rid of this. Right, FUBAR, yay. All kinds of silly stuff. 
All right, now let's just show you what we can do. The first thing you can do is go up here to File, and then we've got iPod. Check a look. Take a look at this. If you click Load Library, it's going to bring up a new tab in your playlist called iPod View, and this is your iPod Library. Yes, indeed. Now this is really handy if you've got a portable version of the program installed on like a flash drive and you're going from place to place and you want to open it up and listen to your music. Well, you just have to install those couple things and um, you know throw that on your flash drive to you know those two. Uh, where are those files at? Well, I already closed it, but install all that and then you can just listen to your uh, iPod using FUBAR wherever you're at. So that can be really handy, you know. All right, back over to uh, here. We're still walking through this. Now uh, you can rewrite the entire database, which is nice. Uh, this can be good for finding orphan tracks that are flying around on there. Nobody likes those. Synchronization. Now this will allow you to synchronize your entire media library, or you can create a playlist. Uh, and creating a playlist is as easy as you know clicking on one of these things. It'll open up in a playlist, like your facet selections, or just right-clicking here after after you get out of that. Of course, eject when done. Right-clicking here and add new playlist, and then you can drop a bunch of files into that and then synchronize that. So that's one way to update your iPod. Um, you can highlight a bunch of things and send a playlist. Managing the contents there. Explore the file system so you can see everything that that includes. Uh, not just the music, but everything else that's on the file system. Of course we have our properties here. Shows your uh, what's connected. That's what I've got connected right there. Yep, 6G. It's the, the big guy. The one, well it's 160, but yeah, 149 capacity. All right, and uh, then of course you can safely eject it. Now I want to show you what's in the preferences here. This is going to be especially handy. You know, I'll make it look like this is how it'll look when you get there, so it's not confusing. Okay, click on the carrot near Tools, and then click on iPod Manager. If you have um, a new device like an iPod Touch or uh, you know an iPhone, you're going to want to go over here to Mobile Devices and put a check mark on Enable Mobile Device Support. If you do not do that, it won't work. So you have several different things here you can change as well. Just take a look through there and, uh, you know, change what you will. All right, now let's talk about um, a few other things because I'm not going to make a, another video for a while. That's pretty much all you need to know. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, right here in your different playlist, you can just right-click on these, and we have some uh, iPod options. You can send it to iPod. That's pretty cool. You can do that for, you know, you can Control-A, highlight everything, and send everything to iPod, or you can just send one song to the iPod. All right. Uh, one more thing I want to show you, how to remove things from your iPod. Go back to your iPod view, and that was generated again by going to iPod and loading up your library. Now, right here, say you don't want Beyond Good and Evil, even though it's an amazing soundtrack. You don't want that on there anymore. You can right-click, go down to iPod, and um, you can remove it from the iPod. Now, one thing that's nice is you can update your artwork. Like some of these, I, I don't have my artwork on this one, so I can go to my iPod and update my artwork. And it'll update the artwork. If you've updated the artwork, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, do not go to File Operations and delete files. Do not do that because what will happen is it will physically delete the files from your iPod, but the, uh, the database information will still be there. So when you're looking at your iPod later, it'll still say Beyond Creation, and that'll still, it'll still look like it's there, but when you click Play, it, nothing's going to happen because the files are gone so it'll really mess with things you always want to come in and do it the proper way by going to iPod and removing from the iPod so we can also update the metadata which can be pretty handy too alright one more thing that can be very handy I'll show you a couple quick things before I uh, before I leave this this is kind of has to do with the iPod but kind of has to do with tagging now uh, this will allow you to essentially rename your songs and, and tag them you know there's tags that are associated with all these files so go in here and um, you can grab tags from the feed DB and it'll go online and search for tags I'm not sure if it'll be able to find this or not this is an oh it did no genre in there oh there we go alternative no way this is like kebab jazz or something man you guys are way off but you can always change this it'll overwrite uh, everything you have so that's pretty cool you can also go down to properties and change all the names that way there's all your information there hey kebab jazz indeed and uh, lastly, you can go to Tools. Auto track number is handy. I'll show you how that works in just a second. Automatically fill values. You can come up here, and uh, let's say you want to change you know, everything, automate this a little bit. We can really get into this. I'm just going to kind of skim over this, but you can use the same rules that we used for our file operations. So let's say you wanted to do uh, title and uh, track number. So we'll do track number first. 
but we're not going to mess with this. Um, this is a this is a separate video, really. You can do so much with tagging. You can even do rating based on you know different values, five star systems. You can, if you really want to get nerdy, you can go in and create an entire world for yourself to just play around in. All right, I also promised that I'd show you uh, what I meant by uh, the auto uh, track number thing. Check this out. If you've got a bunch of tracks here and they're all in the wrong order, like suppose that there were no track orders right here, there are no track numbers, and it wasn't already nice and clean like I like it. Well, you can grab these and be like, okay, well, I know this one goes here, and let's see, I know this one goes here. Then you set it all up, then you right-click on it, go to Tagging. I'm sorry, you right-click on it, go to Properties, go to Tools, and go to Auto Track Number, and it will number them based upon the order that they're in. I don't want to do that, though. It's bad for my health. What the hell's this crap? Yep, goodbye. All right, since I'm not going to be making a uh, video for a little while, I'll show you one more thing to make your life easy. Go over here to Preferences, and let's check out the keyboard shortcuts. Now, uh, I've got a bunch of them set up already, but I'll show you guys how to add new ones. Now, the thing I like about the keyboard shortcuts is the fact that you can make these global hotkeys, and that means you're not going to have to minimize and maximize your player all the time to change the songs. You can just set a hotkey for next song or last song or play or pause, and then just smack that hotkey, no matter what program is open, it will work. Even if this is minimized, and this is also going to be um, really handy. If you have a media keyboard, a lot of times it will work by default, but if it doesn't, you can always map the media keys to the uh, hotkeys. So let's just start off here. I'll show you how this works. There's a lot of different actions here that you can map. I mean, a gazillion actions, even like set rating from 1 to 10, just whatever. You, you, you name it, it's there. Let's do a play and pause. So I'm going to filter it down just so it's easier to find things. And it's all categorized. Oh, playback. There we go. Yes, I want it to be uh, not play, but I want play or pause. So when I hit it once, it plays. When I hit it again, it pauses. So uh, let's make that um, a control. Uh, let's see, control th that number pad 7. I'm just making up a key because I already have things mapped and I don't want to you know, mess with them. Make it a global hot key so that it'll work even if the thing is minimized. And then we... Uh, that's it. You can add another one. So let's add another one now. That one's that one's there. Number pad seven is going to be uh, play or pause. Let's add one for volume, uh, volume, volume up. How about that? Volume up. And volume up. I'll put control and uh, number pad. This is terrible. I should have been. I, I have already have control up set, so I don't want to overwrite that. But global hotkey. So then you just press control number pad five, and that brings the volume up. You guys get the idea. I don't need to insult your intelligence. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to mess with this anymore. Uh, but that's another little thing that you can do to uh, make your life much better. Yeah. It's a good album right there. This is a great album, as a matter of fact. You guys should check it out. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. All right, let's uh, do the close information and all that crap that we like to do. All right, so again, come hang out with us over here on the website. A lot of fun stuff going on in the feed. Of course, Wendell's always doing ridiculous things, like uh, this week he's been building... Uh, putting a retina display on a uh, on an ITX system. Yep, it's the retina display, and that's like an old lamp. You know, like one of those desk lamps? Yeah, he sure did. All right, follow me on Twitter, and uh, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe wherever you're at, yeah. Logan RTW, this stuff. Oh, yeah, it's about time to go drink one of these. I'll give you a dollar if you can uh, tell me where this came from.